on behalf of Lockport Lodge, I would like to welcome you all here. Uh, traditionally, the outgoing master welcomes everyone here, but his wife Helen has been having uh, heart issues and she is back in surgery, so he will not be here. So on behalf of the uh, officers elect of Lockport Lodge, I would like to welcome you all here. First thing I would like to have everybody do is please silence your phones. And I better make sure that I did mine because I would be the one that left it on. And at this time, I would like to introduce those who will be assisting me in the installation of officers. As installing secretary, Brother Gary Hare. Brother Hare is a wishful past master of Lockport Lodge number 538, right wishful uh, assistant area deputy grand master for the Northeastern District and the Right Wishful Grand Persevoc for the State of Illinois. <laughs> the Southern Chapel, Right Wishful Brother Bill Thomas. <laughs> Brother Thomas is a wishful past master of Lockport Lodge number 500. Madison, I'm going to get it right one of these times. Mount Joliet Lodge number 42 and a Right Wishful uh, Grand Examiner. As installing Marshall, Brother Brian Edmund. Brother Edmund is a wishful past master of Madison Lodge number 175 and a right wishful grand lecturer. The officers will repair to, to repair their expected places in the lodge. Stoy Marshall. You will conduct the wishful master elect and his corps of officers into the lodge. Will everyone please rise and join with me in giving the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Right Worship Brother and Son Chapman. We will attend at the altar. Please be seated. Great Worship Lord and Solomon Secretary, you will announce the names of the brethren elected and appointed to govern this lodge. Brethren, ladies, and guests, here are the elected and appointed officers of the 2024-2025 Masonic Year. Worshipful Master, 
Kenneth A. Fry. Senior Warden, Jeffrey D. Moore. Junior Warden, Ray Araujo. Treasurer, Worshipful Brother John A. Lindquist. Secretary, Right Worshipful Brother Donald E. Fisher. Chaplain, Joseph C. Dvorak. Senior Deacon, Philip W. Bedito, Sr. Junior Deacon, Jonathan D. Sinowitz. Senior Steward, Bert Abney, Jr. Junior Steward, Jason Kruger. Marshal, Javier Castro. Organist, Worshipful Brother Ralph Lavin. Tyler, Dwayne K. Woolworths. Brethren, you have heard the names of the brethren who have been selected as, your, of, as officers of your lodge for the ensuing term. If any member present knows of a just cause why any of the brethren should not be installed into office, let him speak now or forever after be silent. Brother Installing Marshall. You will present the Worshipful Master Elect for installation. you will place our brother at the altar to receive the benefit of prayer and take his official obligation. blessing on this brother elected to preside over this lodge and now prostrate before thee. Fill his heart with thy love that his tongue and actions may pronounce thy glory. Make him steadfast in thy service. Grant him firmness of mind. Animate his heart and strengthen his endeavors. May he teach thy judgments and thy laws and be thy true and faithful servant. Bless him, O Lord, and bless the work of his hands. Accept us in mercy. Hear thou our prayer and grant our earnest supplications. Amen. Simone, Simone. Be <clears throat> Brother Sipayan, you will repeat after me your official obligation. I solemnly promise on the honor of a Mason. I solemnly promise on the honor of a Mason. That in the office of worshipful master, that in the office of worshipful master of Lockport Lodge number 538, of Lockport Lodge number 538, I will, to the best of my ability, I will, to the best of my ability, strictly comply with the Constitution, strictly comply with the Constitution, bylaws and regulations, bylaws and regulations of the most worshipful Grand Lodge, of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of ancient free and accepted masons, of ancient free and accepted masons. Of the state of Illinois. Of the state of Illinois. The bylaws. The bylaws. Of Lockport Lodge number 538. Of Lockport Lodge number 538. And all other ancient Masonic usages. And all other ancient Masonic usages. usages. So far as the same. So far as the same. Shall come to my knowledge. Shall come to my knowledge. Amen. Amen. Sideliners may be seated.
My brother and inducting you into your office as a symbol of the commencement of your government of this lodge. I am performing a most pleasing duty. By immemorial usage and established landmarks of Freemasonry, you are to be installed as worshipful master of this lodge with powers and prerogatives which are of high importance and due solemnity. The good resolutions which I doubt not you have formed in your own mind, that these powers shall not be abused or perverted by you, I would gladly strengthen by a word of admonition. The very consciousness of the possession of a great power will ever make a generous mind, cautious and gentle in its exercise. To rule has been the lot of many, and requires neither strength of intellect nor soundness of judgment. To rule well has been the fortune of but few, and may well be the object of an honorable ambition. It is not by the strong arm or the iron will that obedience and order, the chief requisites of good government, are secured, but by holding a key to the hearts of men. The office of master is of great antiquity and respect, and is one of the highest dignities to which we aspire. It's incumbent to rule well should possess and practice several important requisites. As a man, he should be of approved integrity and irreproachable morals, free from the dominion of a hasty temper and ill-governed passions, of good repute in the world, and practicing as an example to his brethren the cardinal virtues of temperance, fortitude, prudence, and justice. As a citizen, he should be loyal to his government, obedient to its laws, prompt to the duties he owes to society, and in a pattern of fidelity in all social and domestic relations. As an officer, he, as a mason, he should claim to the old landmarks and be sternly opposed to their infringement. Be desirous to learn and apt to teach. Be prompt to aid and relieve. And be ever mindful that, though elevated for a time above his fellows, he is elevated by them. And should therefore cultivate everywhere and all, at all times the golden tenets of brotherly love, relief, and truth. As an officer, he should remember first of all that he is, is an individual mason sharing in that respect a common lot with his brethren, and therefore interested in the welfare of each and all. Be devoid of undue ostentation and haughty overbearing. Be accessible to all, cultivating the closest friendship and the most limited, unlimited confidence of his associate officers. Be eager to take counsel with his brethren and ready to be given. Be ready to reward good. Be devoid of a favoritism and wholly impartial. Such are some of the most important qualifications the master should possess and the errors he should avoid. It may be that most, if not all of us, have failed to reach this standard, but it is attainable. And be it your purpose to reach it, and be a bright and shining example to those who should come after you. My brother, previous to your investiture, it is necess necessary that you should signify your assent to those ancient charges and regulations which point out the duty of the master of the lodge. You promise to be a good man and true and strictly to obey the moral law. You promise to be a peaceable citizen and cheerfully conform to the laws of, in the, of the country in which you reside. You promise not to be concerned in plots and conspiracies against government, but patiently to submit to the law and the constituted authorities. You promise to be cautious in your behavior, courteous to your brethren, and faithful to your lodge. You promise to avoid private peaks and quarrels and to guard against intemperance or excess. You promise to pay, to pay respect you promise to respect genuine brethren and to discountenance impostors and all dissenters from the original plan of masonry. You promise to pay homage to the Grand Master for the time being and to his officers when duly installed, and strictly to conform to every edict of the Grand Lodge or General Assembly of Masons that is not subversive of the principles and groundwork of masonry. You promise a regular attendance on the committees and communications of the Grand Lodge on receiving proper notes and to pay attention to all the duties of masonry on convenient occasions. You agree to, <coughs> excuse me, to hold in veneration the original rulers and patrons of Freemasonry and their regular, regular successors, supreme and subordinate, and to submit to the awards and resolutions of your brethren when at large convene, in every case consistent with the constitutions of Freemasonry. You agree to promote the general good of society, to cultivate the social, social virtues, and to propagate the knowledge of the mystic art. You agree that no visitor shall be received into your lodge without due examination and satisfactory evidence of their having been initiated in a regular lodge. You admit that no person can be regularly made a mason in 
or admitted a member of any regular lodge without previous, due, without previous notice and due inquiry into his character? You admit that, do you agree that no new lodge shall be formed without permission from the Grand Lodge? And that no confidence be given to any irregular lodge or to any person clandestinely, clandestinely initiated therein, being contrary to the ancient charges of Freemasonry? You agree that it is not in the power of men or body of men to make innovations in the body of Masonry? These are the regulations of ancient free and accepted Masons. Do you submit to these charges and promise to support these regulations as masters have done in all these before you? I do. Brother Sapayan, in consequence of your cheerful assent to these charges and, re charges and regulations of the ancient fraternity, you are now to be installed worshipful master of this lodge, in full confidence of your care, skill, and capacity to govern the same. Brother Marshall, you will conduct the worshipful master to the foot of the dais. Pleasure I now cause you to be invested with the jewel of your office, the square. As the square is employed by the operative mason to fit and adjust the stones of the building and all its parts may properly agree, so you as worshipful master of this lodge are admonished by the symbolic meaning of the square to preserve that moral deportment among the members of your lodge, which should always characterize good masons. You will also receive the charter and the various books and implements used in your lodge. <clears throat> the Holy Bible, that bright light of masonry, will guide you to all truth. It will direct your path to the temple of happiness and point out to you the whole beauty of man. The compass is lit. Teach us to limit our desires in every station, that rising to eminence by merit, we may live respected and die regretted. The rule directs that we should punctually observe our duty, press forward in the path of virtue, and incline neither to the right nor to the left, in all our actions have eternity in view. The lion. teaches us the criterion of moral rectitude, to avoid assimilation, conversation, and action, and to direct our steps to the path which leads to immortality. In the Book of Constitutions, you are to search at all times. Cause it to be read in your lives that none may pretend ignorance of the excellent precepts that enjoin. You now receive and charge the charter by the authority of which this lodge is held. As its lawful custodian, you are carefully to preserve and duly transmitted to your successor in office. You will also receive and charge the bylaws of your lodge, which you are to see carefully and punctually executed. Brother Marshall, you will conduct Mrs. Julianne Sapayan to the east, please. We will both take you up there. <laughs> so, well, you don't sit on you. No, you don't sit on you. <laughs> I, I will tell you. I will tell you. <laughs> I now cause you to be invested with your gavel, additional an additional insignia of your rank and authority. Wield it, my brother, with prudence and discretion. I now cause you to be seated in the oriental chair, and covered with, covered with that distinction which in this lodge is alone your privilege to wear. Will the brother, will the members of the party, please arise?
Worshipful Master, behold your brethren. Brethren, behold your Worshipful Master. Installing Marshal, he will present each of the other officers in the order of his rank for installation. Senior Warden of Lockport Lodge, and will now be invested in the junior year office. The level demonstrates that we are descended from the same stock, partake of the same nature, and share the same hope. And though distinctions among men are necessary to preserve a state subordination, yet no eminence of station should make us forget that we are brethren. For he who is placed in the lowest fort, spoke of fortune's wheel may be entitled to our regard, because a time will come, and the wisest knows not how soon, when all distinction but that of goodness shall cease, and death, the grand leveler, reduce us to the same state. Your regular and punctual attendance is essentially necessary. In the absence of the master, you are to govern this lodge. In his presence, you are to assist him in the government of it. Your fitness for the discharge of such important duties undoubtedly led to your selection for the office by your brethren. It will be your duty and should be your pleasure. So we act as to justify their confidence. Brother Moore, look well to the West. Officer, I present Brother Ray Araujo, Junior Warden Elect for installation. Brother Araujo, you are elected Junior Warden <coughs> and will now be invested the Junior Warden. <coughs> the plum admonishes us, to, admonishes us to walk uprightly in our several stations, to hold the scales of justice in equal poise, to observe the just meeting between intemperance and pleasure and to make our prejudices coincide with the giant line of our duty. To you is committed the superintendence of the craft during the hour of refreshment. It is therefore indispensably necessary that you should not only be temperate and discreet, <coughs> excuse me, in the indulgence of all your own inclinations, but carefully observe that none of the craft be suffered to convert the means of refreshment into a temperance or excess. Your regular and punctual attendance is particularly requested, and we have no doubt that you will be ever watchful, whether at labor or refreshment, but the high twelve of observation does not find you with your work or that of the craft you superintend unperformed. Whether it raho look all to the south. Officer, I present Brother Jonathan Lindquist, Treasurer-Elect for installation. First Brother Lindquist, you are elected 
treasurer of Lockport Lodge and will now be invested with the, the jewel of your office. There's a story. Oh, there's a story behind that. But they are uh, the, the, land, the lanyard on his regular officer's jewel broke. So it's at the jeweler's being fixed. So he had some other lanyards in the desk that he decided to use. And he thought, well, at least they're not cross keys, but they are keys. To the lodge. To the lodge. <laughs> <laughs> it is your duty to receive all monies paid into the lodge from the hands of the secretary. Keep a just and regular account of the same. Pay them out by the order of the worshipful master and consent of the lodge. I trust that your regard for the fraternity will prompt you to a faithful discharge of your duties. Now, I could install myself. I could install myself, but I really don't want to. So, right there for Brother Thomas. We'll approach these. Secretary elect for installation, God bless his soul. Tonight, worshipful Brother Fisher, you are elected secretary of Lockport Lodge. What were you thinking? <laughs> Short straw. <laughs> well, as my son said when he was sitting for dinner one night, he said the last time you were kind of thrown in this. This time it was of your own free will and accord, so you ought to be happier about it. I and I are. are. I hope you are. He gets applause and I'm not <laughs> It is your duty to observe the will and pleasure of the worshipful master to record the proceedings of the lodge proper to be written. Transmit a copy of the same to the Grand Lodge when required. Receive all monies paid into the lodge, pay them over to the treasurer, taking his receipt therefore. Your good inclination to Freemasonry in your lodge will induce you to discharge the duties of your office with fidelity, and by so doing, you will merit the esteem and approval of your brethren. I have to say, the last time when I was, like I said, kind of thrown into the office, I was here for 18 years. Now, at the age I presently am, uh-uh. That ain't happening again. 19. <laughs> about 19. Do another uh -huh. five. Pardon? Do another five. That would be good. Four. Four. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Brother Vitado, <laughs> you are elected senior deacon of Lockport Lodge and will now be invested with the jewel of your office. This rod, which you will bear in the performance of your duty, is now placed in your hand as a symbol of your reputed authority. It is your province to attend on the master and wardens, and to act as their proxies in the active duties of, duties of the lodge, such as the introduction and, accommodation of, and <laughs> the introduction and accommodation of visiting brethren, uh, and the immediate practice of our rights. The square encompasses as, as a badge of your office is entrusted to your care, not doubting your vigilance and attention. You will repair your respective place in the lodge.
こっちしょうですね。Officer, I present Brother Bert Abney Jr. and Brother Jason Kruger, Senior and Junior Stewards appointed for installation. Now, before I begin their installation, I'm going to have to concede the fact that、uh, there's a jewel missing. Now, seeing that there is no difference between a senior and junior steward's jewel,、uh, they can fight over it. Give them the rods first. Brother Agnew and Brother Kruger, you are appointed senior and junior stewards of Lockport Lodge. And one of you will be now be invested with the jewel in his office. <laughs> yeah, you didn't put mine on. I know. <laughs> You are to assist, assist the deacons and other officers in performing their respective duties. And when the lodge is at refreshment, it will be your province to extend the visiting brethren such attentions as circumstances may suggest. Your regular and early attendance at our meeting will afford the best proof of your zeal and attachment to the lodge. You will repair your respective places in the lodge. I present Brother Javier Castro, Marshal appointed for installation. Brother Castro, Castro you were appointed Marshal of Lockport Lodge and will now be invested with the jewel of your office. And there's another one. Forgot his baton. You will be invested with your baton as the appropriate symbol of your office. It is your duty to form and conduct processions of the Brethren of the Lodge on all public occasions, to attend and such duties in the practice of our rights as are prescribed for your office and as the worthful master may direct. Is the appropriate emblem of your office. Carry it safe. <laughs> okay. As the, sword As the sword is placed in the hand of the tileman to enable him to,、uh, to guard against the approach of Collins and eavesdroppers and see that none pass or repass, but such as are duly qualified and have permission. So it should admonish us to set a guard over our thoughts, to watch at our lips, and post a sentinel over our actions. Thereby preventing the approach of every unworthy act, thought, or deed, and preserving conscience as point of offense toward God and toward man. I trust that your regard for good order will prompt you in the faithful discharge of your duties.
I am uh, often accused of not stating these final, these final charges and where they came from. They are called the Paul Revere charges. They were written by Brother Paul Revere when he was most worshipful Grand Master of the state of Massachusetts. I think somewhere around 1789. And uh, they have been used in our lodges forever. So, worshipful master. <coughs> This worshipful lodge having chosen you for its master and representative, it is now incumbent upon you diligently and upon every proper occasion to inquire into the knowledge of your fellows and find them daily employment, that the art which they profess may not be not forgotten, may not be forgotten or neglected. You should avoid partiality, giving praise where it is due, and employing those in the most honorable part of the work who has made the great who have made the greatest advancement for the encouragement of the art. You should preserve union and judge in all causes amicably and mildly, preferring peace. That the society may prosper, you should preserve the dignity of your office, requiring submission from the perverse and refractory, always acting upon and being guided by the, by the principles upon which your authority is founded. You should, to the extent of your power, pay a constant attendance on your lodge, that you may see how your work flourishes and how your instructions are obeyed. You should take care that neither your words nor actions shall render your authority be less regarded but that your careful, prudent, careful behavior may set an example and give a sanction to your power. And as brotherly love is the cement of our society, we so cherish and encourage it that the brethren may be more willing to obey the dictates of Masons than you have occasions to command. To the officers, to you. And you, the officers of this worshipful lodge, to carefully assist the master in the discharge and execution of his office, diffusing light and imparting knowledge to all the fellows under your care, keeping the brethren in just order and decorum, that nothing may disturb the peaceful serenity or obstruct the glorious effects of harmony and concord, and that these may be the better preserved, you should carefully inquire into the character of all candidates of this honorable society, and recommend to the, to the master, who in your opinion is unworthy of the privileges and advantages of baseball keeping the cynic far from the ancient fraternity, where harmony is obstruction, ex obstructed by the superstitious, superstitious and morose. You should discharge the lodge quietly, encouraging the brethren assembled to work cheerfully, that none, when dismissed, may go away dissatisfied. To members of the craft, and you, the brethren of this worshipful lodge, learn to follow the advice and instruction of your officers, submitting cheerfully to their amicable decisions, laying aside all resentments and prejudices toward each other. Let your chief care be to the advancement of the society of which you have the honor to be members. Let there be a modest and friendly, friendly emulation among you in doing good to each other. Let your actions be squared by the rules of masonry. Let friendship be cherished, and all advantages of that title by which we distinguish each other, each other, we may be brothers, not only in name, but in the full import, extent, and latitude of so glorious an appellation. Finally, my brethren, as this association has been carried on with so much unanimity and concord, so may, continue, so may it continue to its latest ages. May your love be reciprocal and harmonious. While these principles are uniformly supported, this lodge will be an honor to masonry, an example of the world, and therefore a blessing to mankind. From this happy prospect, I rest assured of your steady perseverance I conclude with wishing you all, my brethren, joy of your master, wardens, and other officers, and of your constitutional union as brethren. Right Worship Brother Installing Chaplain, you will pronounce the benediction. Will everyone please rise? God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon thy servants here assembled the helpful spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee in all their doings. Grant, O Lord, power of mind and great understanding unto those whom we have this day clothed with authority to preside over and direct the affairs of this lodge, and so replenish them with the truths of masonry, and adorn them with humility of life 
that both by word and good example they may faithfully serve thee to the honor of thy holy name and to the advancement for every good purpose of our beloved institution. Amen. So, so it be. be. on their feet. That will be the last thing they'll forget today. Yeah, Ken? <laughs> I am directed to proclaim and do hereby proclaim that the master, wardens, and other officers elected and appointed to govern Lockport Lodge number 538 have been regularly in installed into respective stations and places for the ensuing Masonic year. This proclamation is made from the east will take due notice and tile themselves accordingly. Thank you. One last thing, 
at the conclusion of the uh, festivities today, Masons keep your aprons on. We'd like to get some pictures. Uh, wives, we'd like you next to your husbands um, during some of those pictures. Uh, I want to thank my beautiful wife, Anna, for being here. Two compadres, one who came in from California specifically for this event. Oh, and my other compadre who is also here as well, and as well as their lovely wives, Angie and Rita. Bill. Uh, my fiance Aaron. My daughter Gia, my grandson, and my daughter's significant other. Thank you. Virtual Master, congratulations. Oh, you, you sat there. You didn't. Well, I was thinking you should go. No, it's treasurer, secretary. It's not the way the way around. That's why I was like, I, I know. Well, he jumped the line. <laughs> he told me, so I got up. I was sitting here content. I got in my eye. I'd like to introduce my wife, Laurel. And she will inform me as to all the mistakes I made and everything I forgot. So it would be good. I come along. <laughs> but I would like to thank all the installing officers for their time. It's such great work. Flying solo, but I'd like to take it. time to thank everybody in the room. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank my fiance Paula. Uh, and thank you for all the visiting brothers and family. Thank you. Treasurer, I'm playing solo today. Uh, the better half is uh, working, so. But um, I want to say thank you to all the brethren and to the installing officers, and this has been a long time in the making. Thanks for the comeback. Well, we have light dinner after this at State Street. It's a block and a half from here, so if you want to walk. There's not a lot of parking over there. So it's only a three minute walk if you want to leave your car. Right? If you want to take your car, that's fine too. And what else? What time is it going to be ready? 345. 345. You got about 40 minutes to talk, Worshipful. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forgot to thank the installing officers, Brett Worshipful, Bill Thomas, Brett Worshipful, Don Fisher. We really appreciate it. We're going to have a good year. And Rep Worshipful, Brian Ed. You forget Gary Hare. How could I forget Gary Hare? Rep right? <laughs> Worshipful. <laughs> assistant <laughs> that, assistant area, area Deputy Grandmaster and the Grand First One, Gary Hare. <laughs> That's all we got. We can start walking slowly. Take pictures. <laughs> oh, hold on, we're gonna take pictures. We'll do the